There was a conversation had yesterday on the Matt Berry show between Matt Berry and Paul Feinbaum, who would be the top candidates, or the conversation was predicated on who would be the top candidates should Nick Saban retire from Alabama's head coach. And the conversation very, very quickly became about Deion Sanders. And Paul Feinbaum had a tremendous sort of mic drop moment where he's like, people ask me who that would be, and I don't know if he's in the top three, but my question would be, why not Deion Sanders? And so this kind of got the gears turning just a little bit, and I think it's an interesting conversation for us to unpack a little bit more. Extremely hypothetical. This is not assuming that Nick Saban's retiring anytime soon. I mean, he's been rolling for a while now, but I just want us to kind of unpack this a little bit together because I think it's worth talking about. Make sure you're subscribed right here. If you love college football and you love everything that has to do with the sport, fall Saturdays, yes, but just year round, like you live, sleep, eat, breathe this kind of thing, you found your spot right here. College football every single day. We are live now, full hour long episodes on this very channel. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern. You can follow me on Instagram and on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, at Jody Pacal to stay in the know for when we're getting rolling over there. Okay, so... To be very, very clear, Paul Feinbaum has his pulse on all things SEC. So if somebody else came out and said this, maybe it has a little bit less juice to it. Maybe we take it a little bit less seriously. But I think with his understanding of the nuances around what the Alabama job entails and around what you have to have in the SEC to be successful, like th this is something that we should actually really kind of think through a little bit. He, I mean, the point that Paul Feinbaum made is you could hire other nice coaches, other coaches that would be good but none of them would have the star power that Deion Sanders has. And he is absolutely right. Now, the caveat to this or the rebuttal to this is, well, hey, it's, it's a little bit crazy, right? Like That's a little bit crazy to just assume that Deion Sanders should take the Alabama job, should it become available whenever that would be. Like, that's a little bit crazy. Maybe so. Maybe so. It's also pretty crazy what's going on right now in Boulder, Colorado. 80 new players, brand new roster, won one game a season ago. They've won two so far in two games. College game day is going to Boulder, Colorado, not because Colorado has some enormous game, because they play Colorado State. Make no mistake, the national attention Colorado is getting is all because of what Deion Sanders has done there in a very short amount of time. So everything that Colorado has right now is crazy. Everything going on in Boulder, Colorado is the epitome of crazy. So all that's to say, there's nothing that Deion Sanders could do going forward that would that, that would shock me or that would be overly surprising. Because with Deion Sanders, I think we just expect the unexpected at this point. We weren't sure what to expect going into the season. And right now, I think we've gotten a pretty good understanding that nothing is off the table when it comes to Deion Sanders and what he is capable of doing. Because we've seen Colorado now. Again, the over-under win total for them in Vegas was three and a half. Three and a half. They're at two right now. So they're well on their way to hitting that over. Here's what I think we should, we should say with the whole Alabama job around Deion Sanders. Who else would you feel more confident in hiring as a head coach to keep the talent level on that roster at Alabama where it is right now as a head coach other than Deion Sanders? Because the, the brand itself always going to have a lot of power, right? That script day, you know it when you see it, like, it kind of speaks for itself. But the pitch to come to Alabama for the last however many years has been Nick Saban. You go to Alabama to play for the greatest of all time. Coordinator might be different. Offense might be different. Defense might be different. But Nick Saban is the pitch for Alabama. And so if they don't hire Deion Sanders, I'm not saying that the talent just falls off a cliff. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying the teams in the SEC, specifically Georgia, who the race has kind of been against for all these top recruits over the last few years between Nick Saban and Kirby Smart and Alabama, Georgia, like where does that fall? What happens then? Are, are you able to keep pace with what Georgia has with Kirby Smart if you hire in a insert whatever head coach you want here? That's not Deion Sanders. I think at the very least, you bring in Deion Sanders as your head coach at Alabama whenever that time were to present itself and you feel extremely confident. Okay, at the very least, we are going to be able to still have top talent. And we can feel that way because of what he's done at Colorado. He brought one of the top players in the entire country in Travis Hunter with him to Jackson State, the FCS level, and then brought him with him to Colorado. Like, it's, it's very obvious. The man attracts talent. People want to play for Deion Sanders. 
And what he's doing right now at Colorado is giving them no reason to think otherwise around coming to play for him. And so for Colorado, the the situation and the brand and the resources and all that, to be real, like Deion Sanders is doing more with what he has at Colorado than other head coaches are doing at operations with more resources. I don't want to say he's doing more with less, but that's kind of the feel around this right now. He's doing more with what he has at Colorado where other coaches are doing less with more. Does that make sense? Now, here's my big question if I am Deion Sanders. Let's say they offer you the, 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 uh, the Alabama job, whenever it is, right? A lot of nuances, a lot of pieces that play into this as to you know who's on his roster at Colorado and what are they doing and all that. Like I understand that. But from a broad strokes perspective, they offer you the job if you're Deion Sanders. My first question Maybe my only question, right off the bat, how many hands are on the wheel of this operation? Do I get to come in and be me? Do I have control of my football team, my locker room, my team? Or is it a thing where Booster kind of has, has a hand on the wheel here, administration has also a couple fingers on the wheel, oh, by the way, that group has a hand on the wheel. Like, Deion Sanders has been so successful at Jackson State and to this point in Colorado because he's done it his way. He's done it his way, and he's had total control. And the leverage that Alabama has versus what Colorado had, Colorado didn't have the money to pay Deion Sanders and found a way to get it for him. Like They, they, they needed Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders was, at that point in time and to this point in time, has been the savior of Colorado football. Alabama, if they don't hire Deion Sanders, they'll hire another good coach. They'll hire somebody else that they feel confident in that can get it done. And so what I want to say here is if you hire Deion Sanders, if you're Alabama, you commit 110% to him being your guy. You say, all right, we understand. We bring you in to be the CEO. You're running this business. You're running this whole team. This is yours. We're going to let you do what we brought you here to do. There is no halfway. There is no half-stepping when you hire Deion Sanders. You're either all in or you're all out. So for Alabama, I think the point remains when it comes to Deion Sanders, one, to this point, from Jackson State to Colorado, like he is a winner. He's proven he can win football games to this point. Now, you want probably a larger sample size. You want more data. I think we'll get that. But the point remains, he's given you something to feel pretty good about at this point in time. Other piece of this, he is built for modern college football. Connects with the players extremely well. Creates belief like I don't think I've seen in a long time in college football. Attracts talent. Talent acquisition is the name of the game in modern college football with the transfer portal and all the mobility that players have now. He is going to win at that. I promise you. So it's it's completely hypothetical. I understand that. But when that conversation came up on the Matt Berry show and Paul Feinbaum essentially just said, no, not essentially. He literally just said, why not? Thought we had to talk about it a little bit and maybe unpack it together. All right. We are live tomorrow morning. We got predictions for week three of the college football season, including... Tennessee going to the swamp to play Florida. Make sure you're dialed in right here. We'll also talk about Colorado, Colorado State. Should be a real good time. Make sure you're subscribed. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, or X if you want to call it X, at JD Pickell. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.